you know, we've been <clears throat> talking in the last few weeks about the mind, about thinking. Last week, we talked about the leader's hats. And today, I want to talk about six thinking hats. Six thinking hats was uh, a book written in 1985 by the psychologist, Dr. Edward de Bono. The inspiration for writing the book came from structuring creative thinking which often leads to confusion and disagreement, especially in groups of people. The, fix, the six thinking heads process applies the idea of parallel thinking, and so allows for organized group thinking that is detailed and cohesive as the group thinks together um, more effectively. I've looked at several articles on the six thinking heads. Now this, is, this idea is, new it's not new to many of you in the civil service uh, you would have gone through courses on that okay um but you know i went back and looked at several articles and in, today i want to share with you in particular from uh, edward de bono's own lecture a few years ago where he set the context of what we are trying to achieve okay i'll put the link to that lecture uh, in the comments later so why is uh, effective thinking important okay, why is effective thinking important let me use the analogy of a car so that there's this engine powerful engine today there's all the electronics uh, in our cars that's the potential of the car you know you pay a lot of money for that car but it won't move without the driver and even if it can move okay how it moves uh, depends on the driver's skill okay so we require skill uh, to utilize the potential of the of the car now, in a computer the analogy is the computer is the hardware very sophisticated hardware today but you need software to run a computer so we are powerful today highly educated creative minds but we need to use them effectively it's like learning a skill or software so that we can uh, maximize the potential that we have. Now, how do people learn? Edward de Bono says it's not by osmosis. You, know, you sit by me and then you suddenly become smart. It's not the, not the best way to learn by experience because you, know, you keep doing the, the, the wrong thing all the time. And certainly uh, some people learn by discussion, but it's not a very... Uh, effective way of learning. You learn by teaching tools, by teaching people tools, giving them frameworks. So imagine that you're a typist at the age of 15 and you start typing with two fingers. And suppose you become a journalist and for the rest of your life, you're typing hundreds, maybe thousands of words every day. At the age of, six, at the age of 60, you will still be typing with two fingers, but you might now be a very good finger typist. On the other hand, if the youngster at age 15 had taken a five-week course in touch typing, then for the rest of that youngster's career, that youngster would have been a touch typist. Okay? So he learned a technique, he learned a framework for typing. The fact that you're thinking does not make you better at thinking. It only makes you better at that particular type of thinking you're doing so. So if you're a bad thinker and you practice a lot, you'll just become an excellent bad thinker. Now, whatever tool we learn must be simple and practical, okay? and that for what we call portable. And in our business, that's very important because we want our skills to be uh, duplicable, okay? to be duplicated. And Edward de Bono shared three recent feedback that he got at the time when he was doing his talk. The first was from Siemens, which at that time was the biggest company in Europe employing 370,000 workers. The head of research, he's, he's, this is what he says, the head of research wrote to me and he said, we were using your six hats at our last top research meeting and that was very successful. The same day, I got another letter from a young man who's in Cambodia and he's there to help the Khmer villagers drill for water in their villages and he could never get the villagers to be involved in the processes and the drill. They just weren't interested and what he was looking for was some way of getting the villagers to be involved. He had his daughter with him who was out of school. So he had one of 
my books with him who called teach your child how to think. And from that, he took the six hats and started teaching this to the villagers. They became so enthusiastic. And they said that this was far more important than drilling for water. And the whole mission, his whole mission changed to teaching them thinking, teaching them the six thinking hats. Okay. Some days later, Edward de Bono says, I was in Wellington, New Zealand, and the head of Wellesley College, one of their leading schools, says, we teach that routinely to our five-year-olds. So this is a technique that works for top executives to Khmer villages to five-year-olds. Okay, so here are the six hats. So white, one hat is white, okay? So think of white as the color of paper, print out, okay? because white is about information. What information is available? What is to be acquired? Discuss how to acquire it, okay? A red hat. Red is the color of fire, of warmth. So red is about feelings. It's about intuition. It's about your emotions. Now, normally we don't let feelings affect decisions, but you know, they, they do anyway, okay? So, but when you share here, there's no judgment. It's just acknowledging how you feel and don't spend too much time here, but you just want to recognize how you feel because intuitions can be powerful also. Now, black, okay? Black is the color of gloom. So black, the black hat is the caution hat, the critical hat. It assesses risk, looks out for danger, for difficulties. It's actually the most important hat. So it's, it's not a bad hat, okay? It's not negative. Okay, although you can think black is negative, but it's not a negative hat. Okay, but be careful. Uh, it can be overused, just like wine. If you take too much wine, wine is good for your heart. If you take too much, you get drunk. Food, you eat too much, you know, it's bad for you. Okay, so uh, it's, it's a logical negative. It's what we call a logical negative. Okay. Then you've got yellow. Okay, yellow is the, it's a bright color. Okay. So remember, yellow is bright, optimistic. So black is the logical negative. Yellow is the logical positive. So it's about optimism. It's about benefits. It's about value. It's about how to make this work. Now, wearing the yellow hat is difficult for most people. Okay? So it's a skill that needs to be developed. Okay? Here uh, in our business, as an entrepreneur, you know, most of us, you know, wear yellow hats, otherwise we, 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 we wouldn't be entrepreneurs, okay? We've got to look for opportunities. Now, green, green is the color of vegetation, of growth. Okay? So green represents the creative hat. It looks at alternatives. It's a lateral thinking. It looks at possibilities. It's about dreams. And, you know, modern progress uh, is because of possibility thinking. It's not because of current information, because based on current information, we are not there. Okay, it's about dreams. I think of you know, JF Kennedy, you know, we, America, we will send a man to the moon. That's green hat. Okay. And lastly, the sixth hat is blue. So, so blue is the color of, of sky, which is overview. Okay. So the blue hat is about managing the process. It's in charge of the overview, in charge of the, the, the summary, you know, in charge of planning. Okay. So these are the, the six hats. Okay. Now, why the six hat works is because it deals with two problems. Okay. The first problem is how we react to ideas that are different to ours. Okay. And here, uh, Edward de Bono talks about the gang of three. Okay. The gang of three uh, is Socrates. Plato and Aristotle. Socrates focused on showing what is wrong, okay? Because he, he said, when you sh keep showing what is wrong, then what is left behind is right, okay? but it's not constructive, okay? Uh, Plato kept arguing about what is truth, okay? Aristotle was about arguments, it's about deductions from facts, okay? Deductions from existing facts, because okay? so it's not very constructive, okay? So if you grew up in that school of thinking, then you tend to, uh, your arguments tend to be, uh, uh, they, they be arguments, okay? It's not constructive. Okay? So that's the first problem. The second problem is that people cannot think of all things at the same time. 
Hey, it's like multitasking. In fact, multitasking is one of the most efficient way of doing things, right? So you're not really focusing uh, on, on, on getting the maximum out of each task. Okay. So because you can't think at all at the same time, and the you know, if you look at neuroscience, the, they've tested the brain just cannot work uh, do one thing at the same time as another. So, so when you wear the six hats, you are doing what is uh, separation so that there can be direct focus on one thing at a time. So everyone puts on the same hat at one time and it's like you're looking at a house you know, from one direction, then all of them, people look at the house from in this direction, then all look from this direction, then all look from the, from the, from the top. Okay? So it's about focusing on one thing at a time. So the idea of parallel thinking is that you're thinking in the same direction with a cooperative and coordinated thinking approach. Instead of arguments A versus B, here A and B look at the problem together. And so he, Edward de Bono gives a, gave some examples that IBM, they found that they, they reduced their meeting times to you know, one quarter of the time. He talked about a jury that came to a result in two parallel cases in 15 minutes using the six hats versus four hours. And he gave another example of senior public servants, mostly university graduates. They had a 493% change in thinking. That's almost a five times increase in productivity. So when do you use it? Okay. Well, you can use it occasionally, for example, in a conversation, if you're having a conversation among some people, then someone may say, okay, let's have some yellow hat thinking, okay? Uh, because it's been quite negative. Let's have some negative yellow hat thinking. And people can switch swiftly to, to having the optimistic point of view uh, wi without being judgmental. So you're not saying, hey, you're being negative, you know? Okay, you're, saying, you're just saying, let's do some yellow hat thinking, okay? So because you mentioned a color, it's neutral, it's abstract. Okay. So that's the occasional use. Or you could use it systematically in all meetings. Okay. So I like this, this particular order. Let me share um, I like, let me share my slides again. So we were talking about this hats uh, again. So I like this particular uh, order here, uh, which was the sequence that I described. Okay. I like it because it follows my process as a coach. Okay, first I set the context of the situation. You know, where are you at? You know, what outcome do you, do you want? You know, I look at what we are now, current reality. Okay, then I clear all the stuff that's lurking in the background. You know, your emotions, you know, your fears, all the negative stuff. So we look at the red, you know, we look at black, we look at those things that are in the background. Then, you know, we start looking at a cup half full, which is the, the yellow thing, all the, all the positive things. And finally, you know, when the mind is relaxed, open, you know, we look at possibilities, new ideas. Okay. But there are many other sequences you can you can follow too. Okay. Uh, you know, these are when you get experience, you can, if you've got some initial idea, you may start with blue white, green, and blue. Now, blue st always starts because blue is the manager. He, he needs to set the context of, of the discussion. Okay, And then at the end, he will summarize. Okay, See, you notice blue is all, always end. But in between, you don't have to follow this rigid order, whichever is, is, is effective. If you want quick feedback, okay, let's look at the bad side, look at the possibilities, go straight to that. Okay? So just to give you an example, you're not fixed to to a particular sequence, okay. But I like uh, I like this sequence because you know there is a emotional uh, flow here. Um, now there, there are you know there are, there. Are, okay, we have, we talk, okay we talk about sequence. Okay, so you know you could start with red and you could also actually end with red. Okay. Because at the end of the whole discussion, uh, you could say, well, we've discussed this now. You know, how do you guys feel now? Okay. How do you guys feel? Because some people may still um, not be happy or some people may be now completely have changed. Yeah, I'm really, really enthusiastic. And so that really firms it. It ends the whole thing nicely with, with emotions. Okay. 
Um, okay, so why? What are the benefits of of the thinking hats? Okay, so let's look at we do have. Okay. So what do we want to have? Okay, why do we do this? What do we want to have? We want to add more value to people. Okay, uh, and we want to do more in less time because time is our most precious resource. So, so we want to have a better idea so we can add more value. Uh, what do we do? Okay, we, we, we apply the process. Okay, how do we need to be? We need to be collaborative versus adversarial. Okay, and uh, we, need, uh, we need to be team players. Okay, that's a team, teamwork is a fourth leadership distinction. Okay, teamwork, team players committed to a common vision. And of course, teamwork is, is the power of synergy, which is the sixth habit of highly effective people. So here we are, very quick summary of six thinking hats. You can go and look at it, uh, but it's, it's really, really uh, simple to use okay, and apply systematically.